So we have to start from question number 22. The two solutions are prepared. Solution P is 0.5 mole per dm cube hydrochloric acid and solution Q is 0.1 mole per dm cube beta. Okay. If you see, both are acids, right? A two centimeter strip of a magnesium ribbon is put into 100 centimeter cube of each solution. Fizzing is seen in both solutions, but fizzing is faster in solution P than in solution Q. So the reason is that it is a strong acid. And here we have a weak acid. Which statement helps to explain this observation? Magnesium reacts with solution P to form a salt, but does not form a salt with solution Q. That is completely wrong because both P and Q are acid. So both react with acid, uh, metal to form salt and hydrogen. Okay. Now, B. More particles are dissociated in solution P than dissociated in solution Q. Yeah, it is very good. Good. It is a correct answer. It is because it's a strong acid. So it completely ionizes, right? Or completely dissociates. And this one partially. So yeah, B is the correct answer. Solution Q contains more stronger acid than solution P. That is wrong. Solution Q has a weaker acid. The particles are closer together in solution Q than they are in solution P. Yes. The particles are closer together in solution Yeah, but it cannot explain the above observation that uh, here in solution Q, the why the fizzing is slower. So D goes wrong as well. So the correct answer over here is B. Very good, Zainab. Now, question number 23. Which compound can be formed by the precipitation? So the, for the from the for precipitation, we always prepare the solu insoluble salts, right? We always prepare the insoluble salt. Just give me a minute, please. Okay. So it's a group one. So it is soluble. So A is not the answer. Again, a group one salt. So it's soluble. It could not be an answer. A nitrate. All nitrates are water soluble. So it is also not an answer. Then we have a lead sulfate, which is a soluble, which is insoluble. So this one can be used, uh, prepared by precipitation method. So D is the correct answer. Yes, very good, Zainab. Now, Question number 24. In a neutralization reaction, which changes in particle sucker? Okay. Okay. In neutralization, we have, for example, acid and a base forms salt and water, right? So salt is NaCl and water is H2. So if you see, it's a molecule, right? But when I talk about this, this one is ion. This one has ions in it. And this one has ions in it. So from ions to molecule is the correct answer. So A, C, and D goes wrong. And B is the correct answer. Is this understandable to all of you? Yes, is this clear? See. This is aqueous, this is aqueous, this is aqueous. And this is water, which is liquid. So water has a molecule, but as these are aqueous, so all of them are present in the form of ions, right? Yes, did you understand, Zainab? Yes, Mustafa, good. Hania, good. So ions are turning into molecule, right? Uh, 
Okay. Now, question number 25. In order to decide which would be better nitrogenous fertilizer, a student calculated the percentage by mass of nitrogen in both ammonium sulfate and ammonium nitrate. Which row gives the correct result? Okay. Ammonium sulfate is NH4 twice SO4 and ammonium nitrate is NH4 NO3. So, percentage of nitrogen, there are two nitrogen, so 2 times 14 over. MR would be 96 for sulfate and nitrogen is 14, 14 plus 4, 18, 18 and 18, 36. Multiply by 100. Can anyone calculate the percent here and tell me the correct answer, please? And then over here, again, it's 2 times 14, which is 28 because there are two nitrogen. The MR of ammonium nitrate is 18, 18 plus 14. 22, 32, 32 plus 48, 80. So 20, 82, 80 times 100. So see here it's 2 times 14, here it's 2 times 14, which is 28. So here I'm getting 35%, right? And here I'm getting 21.2%. So this means then C is the correct answer. So A, B, and D goes wrong and C is the correct answer. Is this understandable to all of you? Okay. Now question number 26. The manufacture of sulfuric acid by a contact process involves the use of three different raw materials. Okay. How many raw materials are elements? And how many are compounds? And how many are mixtures? Okay. So if you recall the contact process, first we need the sulfur, which is an element. Right? Reacts with oxygen to form sulfur dioxide. Sulfur dioxide then further reacts with oxygen to form sulfur trioxide. So here, this oxygen has been used. This oxygen is basically taken from air. So air is a mixture. Right? So we need an element. We need a mixture. And then when sulfur trioxide is formed, it is dissolved in sulfuric acid to form oleum. So see, sulfuric acid is a compound. So if you see, we need one compound, we need one element, we need one mixture. So then C rho would be correct. Because in C raw says that we need one element, we need one compound, and we need one mixture. So C is the correct answer. Is this understandable to all of you? Yeah, to oxygen, but oxygen is not directly used. It's used as a, it is taken from the air and we use air, not oxygen. Okay. Question number Yes, but see, it's a aqueous solution, so water is already there as well. Now, question number 27. The diagram shows the part of the periodic table. Which two letters represents element that can react together to form a covalent compound? So, we know these two when combined to form a covalent compound, so the correct answer can is actually a D. W and X does not form a compound together. 
W and Y can form ionic compound together. X and Y can also form ionic compound together. And Y and Z are going to form a covalent compound together. So A, B, and C goes wrong. And this is the correct answer. OK. Now, question number 28. Which statement about elements in periodic table is correct? Elements at the left hand side of the periodic table are more metallic than those in the same period near the right hand side. Yeah, that is the correct statement. Because when we see the periodic table over here, we have a sodium, then we have a magnesium, then over here, aluminium, silicon, phosphorus. I'm just taking the example of period three, sulfur. Chlorine, argon. So see, here they are metallic and here they are non-metallic. So A seems correct. Elements at the top of the group lose electrons more readily than those in the same group that are lower in the periodic table. That is wrong because when we move down the group, the size increases. So the attraction decreases. So as we move down the group, the size gets bigger, the elements become more readily available to lose the electron. So B statement is wrong. Element in the same group of the periodic table have the same number of completed shells of electrons. No, always their shell of electrons are increasing. They have a complete number of electrons in their valence shell. So C is wrong as well. Elements in the same period of the periodic table have the same number of electrons in the outer shell. No, they have a same number of electron shells. Their outer shell number of electrons are different if they are in the same period. So B, C and D goes wrong. And A is the correct answer. Question number 29. Which statement about the properties of the elements in group 8 of the periodic table helium to xenon is correct? Okay. So they are talking about group Eight, helium, neon, argon, and after argon, I think it's a xenon or krypton and xenon. Okay. So here we have a krypton and there here we have a xenon. Argon reacts with iron? No, not at all. They do not react. Helium is less denser than air. Yeah, that can be a possibility because the mass of helium is very low. It's four, right? So that can be a possibility. The element changes from gas to solid down the group. No, they all are gases down the group. So C is wrong. The element exists as a covalent molecules. No, they exist as an element. They do not bond, right? So B is the correct answer. Now, question number 30. Which two statements indicates that metal M may have a proton number between 21 and 30? It conducts electricity. Okay. So if it's a metal and it conducts electricity, so 20 and 21, yeah, both can conduct electricity. So this might seem correct. But the other thing is that, that all the metals do conduct electricity. So it conduct electricity doesn't mean that they have an atomic number. Okay, between 21 and 30. So it means if you see over here, 21 and 30 is this raw, right? So these are what? Transition, right? So the metals which are not transition also conduct electricity. So no, this goes wrong. And if statement one is wrong, then you see A and B goes wrong. It does not react with water. So it is also wrong because metals do react with water. It forms two basic oxide with the formula of MO and M2O3. Yes, that can be correct because if you see over here, there is an iron whose atomic number is 26 and iron forms an oxide, iron two oxide as FeO and iron three oxide as Fe2O3. So, 
FeO and Fe2O3, both of the oxides can be found by iron with the atomic number of 26. So yeah, this statement can be correct. It forms colored sulfate. Yes, because it's a transition. So it can form colored su substance as well. So third statement, C option goes wrong as well. And we are left with only D, which is correct. Okay. Now, question number 34, 31. Different metals react with water in different way. What statement is correct? Calcium does not react with cold water. No, calcium react with the cold water. Magnesium also react with the cold water slowly. Iron reacts slowly with the steam to produce an oxide of iron and hydrogen. No. Okay, oxide of iron and hydrogen. Yeah, they, that can be possibility. It means they are talking that iron reacts with the steam. Yeah, that is possible. Iron is below magnesium, so iron can react with the steam to form FeO and H2, hydrogen gas. Yeah, so that is the possibility. Magnesium reacts with the steam to produce magnesium hydroxide and oxygen. No, it's wrong because oxygen is not formed. Instead, and with the steam, magnesium hydroxide is also not formed. Magnesium oxide is formed. With water, magnesium hydroxide must form. Sodium reacts with cold water to produce aqueous sodium. No, with cold water, sodium hydroxide is formed, not oxide is formed. So, B goes wrong as well. So, we are left with B. So, B is the correct answer. Is this clear to all of you? Okay. Now, question number 32. Metal X is more reactive than zinc, but less reactive than sodium. So it means here we have a sodium, magnesium. Okay. No, it's not magnesium. Potassium, sodium, magnesium, aluminium, zinc. So here it is sodium and here it is zinc. Okay. What would be the best method to obtain the metal X from its ore? Okay, for all of these, we do the electrolysis. So electrolysis of the request solution of a salt X. No, we really do the electrolysis of their oxides, not their salt. Electrolysis of the molten oxide of their XCS can, this can be done. Heating on the, the oxide. No, it is the one where the, the whose, those metals are less reactive than hydrogen. Heating the oxide X with the powdered carbon. No, which are below zinc or zinc and below zinc can be, you know, expected by this method heating with the carbon. So A, B, and D go, goes wrong. And A, C, and D goes wrong. Third, and B is the correct answer. Okay. Now, question number 33. Steel is often galvanized. Okay. Which statement about galvanizing is correct? Galvanizing makes a steel alloy. Steel is already alloy, right? So galvanizing doesn't make it alloy. So A is wrong. And if you see A is a statement one is wrong, which makes one, if one is wrong, then A, B, and D all goes wrong and we are left with only C. So C is the correct answer. Okay. Galvanizing provides a sacrificial protection. Yes. Galvanizing puts a layer of zinc onto steel. Yes. Okay. Now, question number 34. In the extraction of aluminum from aluminum oxide, the following three reactions takes place. Oh, uh, yeah, that occurs at cathode. And these two reactions are correct. Anode. Because when the oxygen forms due to high temperature, it reacts with the carbon of anode. Which reaction only takes place at the positive electrode? So if you see positive electrode is an anode and cathode is a negative electrode, right? So two and three, which makes D correct. So A, B and C goes wrong. And D is the correct answer. I hope it's clear to all of you. Now question number 35. The carbon cycle regulates the amount of carbon dioxide in atmosphere. Combustion, photosynthesis, respiration are involved in this cycle. How do these, how do these processes affect the amount of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere? Okay. Combustion produces carbon dioxide, right? So the level of carbon dioxide increases. Photosynthesis 
used use this carbon dioxide so the level of carbon dioxide decreases and respiration carbon dioxide is exhaled so increases so with photosynthesis it's decreased makes d and d correct and over a combustion carbon dioxide level is not decreased is increased so d goes wrong as well so b is the correct answer is this clear to all of you yes very good zainab and rahim now question number 36 which statement about alkene is correct alkenes are described as being saturated because they are insoluble in, yeah they are being saturated not because they are insoluble in water because the, there is no more hydrogen being added to them so, so being saturated is correct but the reason is wrong alkene react with the chlorine in addition reaction yeah they react with the chlorine but not in addition reaction in a substitution reaction the alkene containing 10 carbon atom in each molecule has a higher viscosity than the alkene containing 20 carbon atom no the more number of carbon atoms the more it's viscous the more it resists to the flow in the flow so c is wrong as well so if we left so we are only left with the d option yes very good rahim so d is the correct answer that the formula of alkene with the 35 carbon atoms in each molecule is c 35 872 so you can verify it with c and h2n plus 2 so if it's 35 then it is going to be 2 times 35 which is 70 70 plus 2 so yeah 72 so that is correct now question number 37 the structure of a compound x is shown okay four statements are made about compound x x burning air to form carbon dioxide and water yes this can be correct x turns bromine water to form colorless to brown from brown to colorless yeah it turns bromine water but from brown to colorless not colorless to brown so if second statement is wrong then you see a and c goes wrong x is a propene so c for propene there are three carbon atoms and here it's a four carbon atom so third statement goes wrong as well and if third statement goes wrong as well so d is wrong so we are left with only one option b so b is the correct one is this clear to all of you the number of carbon carbon single bonds is increased by reacting with the x with the hydrogen yeah when we react with the hydrogen this turned into single bond one hydrogen and one hydrogen book gets bonded over here so yeah the number of uh, carbon carbon single bonds increased now question number 38 when ethene reacts with the steam to form ethanol which type of a reaction takes place so see two reactants are reacting together to form a one product so that kind of a reaction is called addition reaction so a is the correct answer b c and d goes wrong and a is our correct answer yes very good sir now question number 39 which compound could be a flavoring in a non-alcoholic food room so for that kind of a flavor what we need esters so it's an alcohol it's an acid acid can't be used as a flavoring if you see this is an alcohol so d goes wrong and you if you see over here it's an ester so c is the correct answer okay is this clear to all of you no question number 40 is a polymer that has six carbon atoms in each monomer from which it is formed okay is not a polyester see it's a polyester so a goes wrong is formed using condensation polymers so see d is not condensation polymer it's an addition polymer so d goes wrong now if you see over here this has a six carbon atoms one monomer and if you see this one this one has a total eight carbon atoms isn't it because a six in the middle and two on left and right so eight carbon atoms so this makes b wrong as well if you see over here see four carbons fifth and sixth so it has a six carbon atom and this one has a six carbon atom so c is the correct option so c is correct is this clear to all of you Yes, very good, Rahim. So, yeah, here we have ended the paper. Okay, so we will do the next paper in the next class. And uh,
sorry mm, yeah so the next class will be on monday inshallah okay